pickle bushes, flat white blinds. Things were green, light had some rhyme. Heard a roar, saw a train. Julia Crane. Cattle dogs, muddy ears. Lots of blokes, riding boots. Swimming pool. Bamboo shoot, Julia Cray. At the town and country there, we had a show to curl your hair. Go back someday if you dare to Julia Cray. So we played some rock and roll. Sang some blues and sang some songs. Some of them lost all control. Julia Craig. Julia Creek is an outback town in mid northern Queensland, located on the Flinders Highway or Overlanders Way, the main road between Mount Isa and Townsville. It is 664 kilometres west of Townsville and is located 123 metres above sea level. The name Julia Creek was named after the niece of Donald McIntyre, the younger brother of explorer Duncan McIntyre, the first white settler in the area. McIntyre took up a property called Delganelli about 70 kilometres north of the present site of the town in 1864, only a few years after the ill-fated Burke and Wills expedition passed through the area. The town's main industries are farming, especially beef and wool industries, and mining, which is mainly centred on the South 32 mine at nearby Cannington. The town is a major centre for cattle sales and stock trucking, with a large sale yard and associated facilities, prior to the expansion of the railway to the larger towns of Cloncurry and Mount Isa. The town was also a major transport hub for freight and passengers. It is here that we explore the Duncan McIntyre Museum, a fascinating collaboration between the Julia Creek Historical Society and local enthusiasts. Named after Duncan McIntyre, a Scottish-born Australian explorer who retraced the steps of Burke and Wills, this museum is a treasure trove of history and adventure. Located at 63 Burke Street, Julia Creek, the museum showcases a diverse array of exhibits, including a vintage Willys Jeep truck, historic machinery, moon rocks, and fossils from the ancient Aramanga Sea dating back some 110 million years. If you happen to visit Julia Creek, make sure to check out the museum, where you can delve into the rich history of the wool industry, a cornerstone of the region's economy, and learn about the challenges of telecommunications in outback Australia. Gain insight into the local hospital's role in the community and its impact on the region. Entry is free, so don't miss this opportunity to immerse yourself in the heritage and stories of Julia Creek. Welcome to Acta Creek. The creek. 
it's the local nickname for our town. So at the creek is a celebration of Julia Creek and the McKinley Shire. Please enjoy your visit as the locals tell in our own words why we love to live here. This community exists and thrives through the interaction of three key elements. The unique country of the Australian outback, the availability of astounding water resources and the determination and sense of community of our people. Water, country and people. At the creek celebrates those three elements. You're standing at the beginning of the creek path. Follow this path to experience the McKinley Shire water story. The straight path that runs diagonally across the site follows the story of the country and visit the historic Fetlers cottages to meet the people of McKinley Shire. At the centre of the site is the Artesian Ball. This is the meeting place where our community comes together. Please be our guest and enjoy your time at the creek. Julia Creek Hotel, or Top Pub as is known by the locals, is located on the corner of Gold Ring and Julia Streets, Julia Creek, not far from the Flinders Highway. There are plenty of parking spots in the street around the pub and they have several ensuite rooms available for an overnight stay or two. We had dinner there several nights during our six day stay in Julia Creek and found the pub had a pleasant atmosphere and the staff were happy and friendly. This seems to be a popular place for locals to enjoy a meal. There was entertainment on the Friday night we were in there, a lady singing country tunes and uh, everyone seemed happy sitting down to their meals with the kids playing around the yard. The top pub was within easy walking distance of our cabin at the Julia Creek Caravan Park. Hey, g'day. Hello, I'm Blue and Quilty, as you might have heard. Behind the camera, Mr. Barry Ion, photographic explorer. And uh, tonight I did put it to Olive, uh, Olivia, <laughs> the similar name, but the same as Olive, uh, that I should uh, make an announcement to the public regarding the Tom Quilty Project Associates' intentions. But when you look around us, We wonder how it is going to be done unless they suddenly decide they're going to come up close to me. Well, I'll try if I'm put to the challenge, as I put the challenge to the Olivia, and I'll have to speak loudly. <laughs> Not something I haven't done before. Hey guys, would you like to buy a raffle ticket? No, I've got that now. Thanks again, everybody. Uh, just before we go, we've just got a. Um, what was your name again, mate? Sorry. Bluey Quilty. This is Bluey Quilty. Bluey Quilty. He's a. Uh, what do you do? I am a researcher for the Tom Quilty Project. Oh, I am a movie producer. He's a researcher and movie producer, and he's just in Julia Creek uh, checking out a few historical things, and he's just going to um, finish off our night with a quick talk. So. We'll make him welcome. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I am Bluey Quilty, Chief of Research for the Tom Quilty Project Associates. Boys and girls of the Community Sports Association, I wish you luck with this dinner. It gives me great pleasure to announce to you, the people of Julia Creek, the commencement of a movie production of one of your great sons, Tom Quilty. Live long, die happy. The legendary Tom Quilty is an epic saga, a tapestry woven on the back cloth of history, but a fire with a passion for glory and envy, and beaten until flapping by the winds of torment with his sons, his men, his aboriginals, his pastoral neighbors, and the beautiful woman Olive Underwood, who consumed him with the fire of love.
The next morning we head north, in the direction of the Gulf of Carpentaria, out on the old Normanton Road and Teldora Road to visit the cattle stations, Manfred Downs, Melungera and Arizona Station to find out more information in our search for Tom Quilty. is uh, Old Normanton Road, isn't it, Mr. Ion? Yes. And so, uh, we hope to find Teldora Road and uh, the access to Manfred Downs. I'm uh, glad that we uh, got out of the hut and uh, done some exploring. I think that I was convinced that I would have uh, been duly arranged by this time with all the station owners. But okay, this is good thing to do. So, let's see what happens. Well, all right then. We just met the uh, grader. Now, our road works going on and then there was the water truck, which is why the road was wet. <laughs> uh, thank God my car is uh, up to it. Subaru Forester. Mm. Oh, oh, oh. Thomas John Quilty, pastoralist and bush poet, was born on 4th of April 1887 at Normanton, Queensland. The second of six children of Irish-born parents Thomas Quilty Sr. and his wife Mary. His father worked at various times as a fencer, teamster, innkeeper and grazier. In 1891 he settled on a property at Croydon in the Gulf Country and named it Oakland Park. Here we go. What's that say? The Old Normanton Road. Manfred, see? This one goes to Malungra. Auckland and Manfred. Malungra is up the end of the old postal route. Thank you. 
Here we are at Manford Dells. Uh, there has been a success in our exploration for today. Manford Downs was in the 20s the uh, property of Arthur Underwood, who was heir to the fortunes of James Underwood, Australia's most powerful trader. In Manford Downs, he held a racetrack and a pub which form an invigorating part of the social life of this region. Manfred Downs in Queensland is a farm and homestead about 1400 kilometres west-northwest of Brisbane and is about 120 metres above sea level. The nearest sea is the Arafura Sea which is part of the Indian Ocean about 310 kilometres north northwest of Manfred Downs. The nearest more populous place is the village of Julia Creek which is 47 kilometers away with a population of around 520. Oh, okay. Line, All right, right then. then. I think it was some. Remains of the old um, baker's oven just up behind the chook pen, but mm -hmm. unfortunately yeah. a tree grew through the middle of it. Oh, okay. So it fell over. So all these oh, that's all right. From the baker's, that's good. From the blacksmith shop. All yeah, 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 yeah. Except that's an old oven. So. Ah. Margaret, our motto is: May you live long, <laughs> and may you die happy. Oh, that'd be good. <laughs> <laughs> and all oh. Irish saying. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, then. okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Did you want to say a couple of things there before we... Hmm? About that Cobb and Co. All right. Who's there? Here we are at Manfred Downs Homestead. The Cobb and Co. stage used to stop here. And uh, I don't think there's anything to do with it. <laughs> But, okay, we're going to have a look around. And let's well, sheep stations and cattle stations were often like a little village where it had uh, residents and uh, visiting shearers and workers and they all had huts and some of them had uh, uh, cottages. And th th there was a bakery here and uh, we are about to try to find the remainder of the baker, the baker's oven.
there is it is it post Here, look, I see something. I see a bunch of stones, big stones. Yeah. Mm, that will be it. was a uh, bakery in uh, this situation in on the property and this looks like it's for sure well you know that the uh, there's a tree growing through the chimney it'll be protected for a while at the Flinders River. There are two major rivers in this region, the Flinders and the Saxby. I'm sure they would flood up in the wet. The Flinders River, the, by which I had hoped to see the former Arizona station, if it is still here, as Mrs. Margaret Woodhouse of Manford Down says. But okay then, apart from that, it's a pleasure ride Let's uh, see if there's any water in the river. Mm. It's hard and dry, Mr. Island. Queensland is home to nearly half of Australia's beef cattle and the vast majority of those beasts contain at least some Brahmin blood. As a result, the Queensland cattle industry has come to depend on these animals whose origins lie outside Europe and which are better able to cope with the local environment. Whilst today humped cattle are a common sight in Queensland, their adoption took place relatively recently and they were firmly rejected at first. The rise of the Brahmin in tropical Queensland dates from the 1960s and occurred only after a concerted campaign on the part of government agricultural researchers. By 2001, that shift was estimated to have benefited the Queensland cattle industry by $8.1 billion. Before 1917, 
when Tom joined the first Australian train tour with Sir John Forrest. Thomas Senior dissolved Quilty and Sons and made Tom the CEO of the new Quilty Brothers. They bought the property Europa Springs, a subdivision of the Scottish near Malungra in Queensland. It was Bowen Downs Hill at the centre of Euroka that Mount Bowen is named after. It is believed that the Underwoods and the Quilties had a prior association in the Gulf Savannah around Croydon. It is also believed that in total Manfred Downs and Malundra were part of Arthur Underwood's properties surrounding Arizona which was his primary base. Action Channel is Malungra. Here we are, They're approaching Malungra Station at the... Uh, home of uh, Action Cattle Company. And uh, as means that we have passed Eureka Springs and and Arizona. Let's see if we can get some ideas from these people. I think there is some chance the waste course and pub, which I speak, was Melundra Station is a pastoral lease that operates as a cattle station in Queensland, Australia. It is located about 144 kilometres northeast of Cloncurry and 197 kilometres south of Croydon. The station occupies an area of approximately 1 million acres or 4,046 square kilometres and is the primary breeding ground for the Acton Land and Cattle Company which is able to stock 40,000 head of cattle. The property has at least one outstation, Crowfells, which has a Santa Gertrudis stud. Tom Quilty was an outstanding cattleman, an authority on Northern Australia, a skilled potty dodger and a bit of a menace to his neighbours. Generous but loath to give praise, he participated enthusiastically in outback social activities. He invested in the Kimberley Hotel at Halls Creek and donated money for a grandstand at the local racing club. 
To raise funds for the Royal Flying Doctor Service, he published a slim volume of verse, The Drover's Cook, in Sydney in 1958. The poems dealt with station life, drinking, personal relationships, and raising children of mixed blood at Springvale Homestead. In 1966, he donated the Tom Quilty Gold Cup for an event that has become a National Endurance Riding Championship. Well, here we are. We have finally found Arizona, a station of considerable interest in our movie production. Uh, we are a little bit confused because there appears to be another Arizona south of Carnuna. Okay, I'm glad this is the one. It uh, is more perfect uh, for the script. Uh, and uh, uh, so I, I get Mr. Philip Kerr, that is Councillor Kerr, the mayor of uh, McKinleyshire, uh, just have a chat. I don't know how far we would like to go. If you want to sit down and do an interview, that would be just fantastic. But at this stage, uh, what we will say is that I am uh, pleased to the opportunity to cut some of it out because we may need to uh, move on back to uh, Sydney as soon as possible. Well, what a name for an Australian cattle station, Arizona. Uh, I'm sure that it had some Spanish background, that word, that name. Maybe it means arid place, and certainly this is one of those. So let us make a move, my boys, for that you promised land And do the best we can, my boys, to lend a helping hand To lend a helping hand, my boys, but the soil is rich and new In spite of all those unknown tracks, we'll show what we can do So blow you in tie, oh, a digging we will go I'll stay down south no more, my boys, so let the music play In spite of what I'm told, I'm off in search of gold and making a push for that new rush a thousand miles away. Hmm. Yeah. And, uh, the Kawana is a keen gardener. Along the Teldora Road, 160 kilometres north of Julia Creek in Queensland's Gulf Country, McKinleyshire locals Philip and Tanya Kerr live on Arizona Station with their three young daughters. Tanya, a keen gardener, has transformed their homestead into a 0.8 hectare sanctuary. Due to the climatic conditions, I've gone for a tropical look, she says. Her passion has resulted in the addition of perimeter beds around the buildings and fences with colourful and textured foliage plants. The Kerr family has also reportedly paid $23 million for Clarabel, 
located in the heart of Queensland's northern gulf of Carpentaria. The 217,000 hectare efficient low-costing breeding enterprise is located 80 kilometres from Croydon and 350 kilometres to both Julia Creek and Richmond. The Kerr family owns the 120,000 hectare Yelvertoft station, 110 kilometres northwest of Mount Isa, and the 69,000 hectare Arizona station. Yeah. Got it. Uh, yeah, otherwise, there's not much that, that I mean, the connection with Tom and, and, and Olive. And you, you all know the story. Olive was about 14 or 15. Yeah. And, and they used to meet over here on the water hole, eh? He'd ride up yeah. the river and I'd meet over there. That's why the ashes end up over the river. I would write, I have written up that the Underwoods have, have, on a monthly basis, a gathering for the district. Mm -hmm. And that, that uh, Tom was married to Lillian Burr, mm -hmm. uh, the sub-inspector's uh, daughter. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and so his, uh, she, uh, Olive at 15, gives a uh, performance uh, uh, of uh, poetry and does a scene from uh, Othello. Mm. Uh, and uh, she is also an accomplished dressmaker, mm. so she shows her dresses up. And uh, so Tom and Patty go to a fence nearby and discuss discuss uh, Olive, mm -hmm. and that's uh, so, okay. Tom decides uh, even then, yeah, a man of 33, that she is it, she is the mm -hmm. one I have to have. Mm -hmm. and Patty reminds him that he's married, but he says, and he knows, he's talking about they've been fighting like <laughs> cats and dogs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, right, right, so okay, in this sorry. context, is this property yeah. is, um, as good as any human being is, probably even better than uh, Arizona ever was. So, just um, uh, let's uh, take a few shots around. You want to just wander around, do what you want, take a few shots. I had a very important football game there. Oh, okay. Oh, oh sorry. Sorry, two o'clock. All right. The Broncos. Yeah, very good. Bronco fans. Oh, yeah. um, and then, um, see you on the track, if I can do anything, you let me know. Yeah. yeah. Have you got my number? Yep. My number? Well, I don't know. I don't think so. Well, he, uh, Melissa. Melissa will give it here. Get Melissa. Yeah, I get it off Melissa. You get it off Melissa. I also need a go to the committee to get uh, maps of the properties. Uh, yeah, right here. Yeah. All good. You do that. Your number's here anyway. Look, I've got it. No, I wrote it. That's you, 0448. Six four five. Six four five seven ninety five. Yes. Got it. Got it. Um, well, right, you fellas go for a wander and we'll okay. let me know down the truck if I can do something. Alright, thank you very much. Okay. See ya. Bye bye. We'll make an eye on to create an Outback magazine article. Yeah. Amongst them. Yeah. Oh, look at those. They're like little. I wonder what that is. That tree there, look. I'll have to investigate. <laughs> I know. I just met the Honourable the Mayor of McKinley Shire, Councillor Philip Kerr, with his wife, owners of the Arizona Station, uh, where we are now. It appears that the original Arizona has gone, and that it uh, has been picked over in a similar way to Manfred Downs uh, during uh, World War I. So I am uh, keen to create uh, a, a, a 
few videos about this place and some stills that we may put it to Outback Magazine. Maybe the old property was adjacent to this pond on the other side. What's over there? Look. Do you see them? Pigs were brought from Europe to Australia over there. by the first fleet in 1788. Oh, two pigs. Imported as livestock. Pig. Pigs soon escaped and established wild populations that have expanded over time. In 2021, it was estimated that Queensland had up to 2.3 million feral pigs. Ooh. They are among yeah. Queensland's most widespread and damaging Ooh, pest yeah. animals. Feral pigs spread invasive plants, degrade soil and water, prey on native species, damage crops and livestock, and carry diseases. A feral pig is a pig that lives in a wild state and is not being farmed or kept for another purpose. A pig is considered to be farmed or kept for another purpose only if it is in an escape-proof enclosure. Feral pig species are typically smaller, leaner and more muscular than domestic pigs with well-developed shoulders and neck and smaller, shorter hind quarters. Mm. Leaving. Leaving the station. Well, that's it. I have. Uh, we have been at um, Arizona Station, uh, a beautiful uh, homestead uh, with uh, three uh, or four buildings, and so uh, glad we came. Uh, uh, Phil Kerr and his wife are uh, good people. That uh, owing to their uh, assistance in the future, this production will proceed uh, uh, within uh, a very uh, early space of time. You can see I didn't rehearse that. <laughs> <laughs> The 1920s brought low prices for cattle, poor rainfall and personal problems. Quilty's marriage founded when he became involved with Olive Underwood, daughter of a neighbouring station owner. In 1937, he and Olive left Queensland to join Patrick, who by then owned Bradshaw's Run on the Victoria River, Northern Territory. Next year they bought the adjacent Coolabar station as well as the Six Mile Hotel at Wyndham, Western Australia. Patrick died in 1938, favoured by his brother's will. Tom lived at Coolabar with his family for most of the ensuing decade. After consolidating their pastoral holdings, they moved west in 1948 to Springvale Station, south of Bedford Downs. Tom eventually divorced his wife in July 1964 and married Olive on the 11th of September that year at the District Registrar's Office, Walls Creek. Yeah. Uh -huh.